When you were little, have you ever played with Barbies and just had fun changing the outfits? Just me? Alright, another analogy. This board is a transformer. This is the <laughs> this is the Corky Z60, and it is a transformer keyboard that can transform into different layouts. It's an affordable keyboard at $189 and is worth a look if you are kind of unsure of what you want. Thanks to Corky's for sponsoring this video and allowing us to give away the prototype unit. The opinions are always my own, but you know I'm heavily biased when it comes to bringing more affordable options to the market. The concept of having alternate keyboard tops to try out different things is not new but typically you would have to buy extra tops and typically it's about half the cost of the keyboard itself. Or it may be a cheaper material like we saw in the Valley 60. This board by Corky's, they designed it in such a way to not only maintain the allure of having an aluminum case, but also reducing costs. So you don't have to spend 50% of the cost of the keyboard just to try out a different top. The way they designed it, you could actually use the alternate tops to add some visual flair. The look of this keyboard is very interesting. The press bars are designed intentionally because there's so many seams. Rather than having the seams look like a little rough, they made the press bars protrude a little bit so that it has a new visual flair and has a different aesthetic. The footprint is pretty minimal, bezels are not too wide, and it has rounded edges. Typically, for an affordable board, the edges are a little bit sharper, and that just feels a little bit cheaper. Having machined corners and smooth edges gives a little bit of a Rama vibe. With those design elements, it could look a little bit more premium, depending on who's looking at it. There's no internal or external weights, so it's a little disappointing, but the cost savings with that design choice are appreciated. The rubber feet strips are welcome because clear bump-ons they typically yellow and they get old after use even if you don't get them dirty it just i was told that the extra holes on the top and bottom that's going to be removed for the production run during my build stream of this there were some mismatching colors like the press bars were a little bit lighter or darker depending on how you looked at it and there's no splotches on the anodization you got to remember when i build these on stream they're prototypes and i confirmed it with the designer this is one of the older protos where they had to redo the press bars a few times mech merlin the magic keyboard creator he stepped in my friend mech merlin stopped in on the stream and he mentioned that his unit was spotless. Lucky him, I get the scuffed one. Just wanted to mention that to uh, ease your concerns. In terms of the build experience, the construction of this board is a little bit difficult due to the press bars. I kind of need both hands to push down to counteract the gasket and a third hand to screw it in. Definitely more finicky than screwing a top case to a bottom case, which is the more typical build experience. In terms of the FR4 plate, you can actually break off the alphas so you can make it an FR4 full or an FR4 half. I personally love half plates. I think my early videos with the SAT-75 and the Savvy 65 making a half plate really improved the sound. And when you take off the plate around the alphas, this is actually reversible if you use the standoffs. The standoffs actually screw the alphas into the PCB so you can still get that FF4 full sound and feel. Of course, you lose some of the flexibility there because you're using standoffs, so keep that in mind. But I think they definitely thought of everything in terms of configurability for one budget board for a beginner. In terms of the sound of this board, it's not bad. was a little bit concerned about the construction, having the press bars and the gasket mounting. I was like, it might not sound so great, but the gasket implementation is solid. And I'm surprised it doesn't sound that hollow with that strange case design. It did need the case foam. So there's that. Sound a little bit eh, without the case foam. but it does not absolutely need the PCB foam. I know people get a little bit up in arms about keyboards that are designed to use the PCB foam and the case foam. It's gonna be up to you, it's a preference thing. The PCB foam and the case foam, I don't think they're porn. They're, they feel a little bit cheaper, but that's forgivable in a budget board. They still do the job of sound dampening though. The feel of typing is decent as well. Unfortunately with the case foam, there's pretty limited flex, but you kind of expect that when you throw case foam in there. I'll go back and test if the flex is still there without the case foam. The finish on the board is overall decent. There are some animal mismatches, but in terms of the 
and the design itself, it feels pretty smooth. I was gonna mention if it's designed this way, but this board actually has a very low front height, 17.2 millimeters, and I love it. You definitely do not need a wrist rest with this board. The other low front height boards I've seen would be the LMNG67, would be the Bauer, Iron165, but most boards that are more tofu height are like 18 to 20 millimeters front height. I personally love low front height boards because my desk is small, so I don't want to have to use a wrist rest. What are my final thoughts on this board? Honestly, the affordable market for keyboards is heating up. For 60% keyboards, you compare this with the Freebird 60, the Tofu, the Bakunako, and others. I think the prices are pretty close to each other, so I wouldn't really just base it off of price, but I do believe that the Z60 has a lot of features that separate them from the others, and it does not have any glaring issues. I like the fact that you can change the layouts, I like the fact that you can change the plates without having to buy too many extra things. It's worth a look if you're in the market to enter a group buy, but I will say that in-stock options are coming, so keep that in mind. For me in the West Coast, in the US, the shipping is $35. So $189 plus $35. If you want to buy extra tops, that'll be $28 each. I personally would recommend buying the standard one so you can get all your keys. And if you want to try HHKB or WinKeyless, buy one extra top. And in terms of the GP period, it's estimated to be 90 to 120 days with shipping to be another one to four weeks. So basically four to five months. And I think it's pretty reasonable for a GP period. But with Chinese New Year coming, keep in mind that it may end up being longer and you know, worldwide chip shortage, shipping issues and all that. Take the estimate with a grain of salt. Let me know what you think of this keyboard in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Peace.